Hey everybody, it's E. Chip and Robber outside the shop, and uh, we're going to reintroduce you to our good friend here that we're standing in front of, and this is Buzz. It's Robert. like a DeLorean, a 12.6 gig gigawatt piece of hot power. <laughs> She's referring to Back to the Future, guys. I don't even remember what the gigawatt is, but this thing is kind of bad like that, too, in a good way. <laughs> Kind of a bad A. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Buzz is our mobile solar generator that Robert and I built two summers ago. And uh, we had a lot of fun building him, but he's not done. Uh, we've got everything we need inside and he's generating power. However, um, one thing we have not done yet is finalize the panel rack system, the solar panel rack system on the side of it. When we built Buzz, we had a design for the panel rack, and we didn't know how it would work until we got it out there to contentment, and we noticed the wind and the different things like that that come into play. So up until now, we haven't had the full entire panel rack on. We've only been using like three of the solar panels. Each of us revised the plan a little bit to tweak it so it can be a better for those of you who've been watching our videos when we built this, you'll know that Buzz started out as a welder's trailer, just a flatbed trailer that we built this superstructure onto. And uh, uh, superstructure is plywood and uh, a little bit of uh, ribbing inside for strength. Um, the suspension on Buzz is rigid because uh, Buzz is so heavy with batteries and components uh, that there's just no way that the suspension uh, could take that kind of rocking and jolting. So Buzz is permanently welded solid uh, on his suspension and is rigid. The only kind of cushioning there is is from the tires themselves. Uh, well, of course, uh, Buzz isn't very big. Uh, Buzz is pretty small uh, in comparison to most trailers. Uh, she's about uh, it's about six feet long by about four feet wide and overall from the ground up about eight feet high. You'll notice uh, that we've got some speed rail connectors up here. You may recall this is the compartment where obviously we can we can monitor uh, Buzz's status, power status, and everything, and we can also, um, you know, plug in our goodies. We've got several 110 outlets, and we have a couple of 220 volt outlets up there. One's a 50 amp, and one's a 20 amp. We have some uh, storage compartments in the front. Behind here, inside, are batteries, and there's also storage for the solar panels uh, inside when uh, this is being moved. Buzz wasn't really designed to be mobile uh, and except in that uh, you know we're able to move him out to where we need and set him up but he's not really designed to be you know taken down and put up and taken down and put up he's designed to be moved to a location set up for a while and left that way this is the side where uh, six 260 watt solar panels come from Buzz has a total battery storage capacity of 19.2 kilowatts. That's 48 volts at 400 amps. Uh, the solar panels that go on here come up to about 15.6 kilowatts. And uh, so that's plenty of power, uh, considering that if this thing will produce or could produce, you know, half of that, uh, it would be uh, plenty of power for what we need out there. Also considering that the average American household consumes about 30 kilowatt hours per day. If this thing's producing, you know, even seven kilowatts uh, per hour, it's more than enough power, so. Yeah, because the shouse is designed to be very, uh, 
electric friendly, I guess. Uh -huh. Very minimal. Yeah. Electric use. That's the thing about our off grid philosophy. We're we want to avoid having to, you know, go into town for things like propane and stuff like that. If we can, we'd like to stick with uh, sources and maybe even more than one source of power that we can generate on site and so we're not dependent uh, on going into town for propane or gasoline or anything like that uh, where it comes to our regular household needs. Yeah. Right now we don't have any intention of getting a generator so. The nice thing about uh, contentment uh, or land is that it receives about 333 days of sunshine per year. Uh, so plenty of sunshine out there to generate electricity on those cloudy days. Uh, we'll just have to be really careful um, and, uh, you know, operate that way. But, boy, we are glad to have him. He proved to be a great asset to us last summer, and he's going to be an even better asset to us once we get him finished up and uh, some more bells and whistled, whistles added. So part of what we noticed out at Contentment when we had Buzz there last summer uh, is the wind. Hey folks, E Chip here. We're out of contentment today on a windy day uh, in May. In fact, it's the first day of May. The wind is nearly constant in the springtime and uh, it, it appears just about every day um, for a little while the rest of the year. Now that's a good thing because that tells us we, uh, we can get some good wind power going out there if we want to. But what it also tells us is that we're going to need a stronger, we think, rack system uh, for the solar panels uh, while it's mounted on Buzz's side. Now, keep in mind, Buzz is designed to be self-contained and movable. So, um, any panel racks that go with it cannot be permanently attached to the ground uh, or to the uh, trailer itself. Um, they have to be able to be removed and replaced. That presents a problem because it's not a permanent system and yet it needs to be as strong as a permanent system because of the high winds we get out there. Uh, during the spring winds go from about 40 to 50 miles per hour sustained for most of the spring during the day and even into the night. And other times of the year, I mean during the summer it was not unusual to get a 20 mile per hour wind at times. So you need a panel rack system that can hold up under this. Now consider for a moment um, a trailer that weighs 2,850 pounds, which is Buzz's weight. And consider the force that would be needed to topple it over. Um, it, would, it would take a lot of force to topple that trailer over unless the surface area of the trailer is so big that it acts like a parachute can, can, where the wind can literally push it over. Well that's sort of the consideration we have with Buzz because the total surface area of the solar panel array once it's installed on Buzz's side is over a hundred square feet. So it wouldn't take a whole lot of force to push it over. With a hundred mile per hour wind uh, we're looking at, if the solar panels are vertical, we're looking at a um, total, uh, a total amount of uh, force on the trailer of 5,120 pounds. Now, that's almost double Buzz's actual weight. But, I've done a few calculations, and here's what I figured out. The effect that the wind can have uh, on Buzz is reduced when you tilt the panels because in a sense that reduces the total surface area and changes the coefficient of drag. If we were to tilt the panels to agree with the summer solstice uh, at about 60 degrees then the calculated force on those panels and on the trailer would be 3072 pounds and that's still heavier than Buzz actually is. Now that's with a hundred mile per hour wind. The highest gust of wind that we have seen recorded uh, near contentment is 83 miles per hour and that's a gust. Sustained winds are around 40 maybe 50 um, on an average spring day uh, which is significant but it's not enough to damage anything or turn the trailer over. Uh, but with an 83 mile per hour wind if you have it set for summer at full tilt 
uh, that's still a 2,549 pound force on the side of the trailer. And if you have it tilted not as much for winter, you're looking at almost 3,000 pounds, 2,974. So you understand the considerations we have to make here when we're building this. And understanding also that we cannot sink any anchors for these panels in the ground because we may need to move Buzz uh, at some time. We've got to make sure that Buzz is stable enough uh, to withstand a good high wind without toppling over, without becoming damaged, uh, or something like that. Uh, just want to reintroduce you to Buzz. Uh, he's been our, our faithful friend. He's provided lots of good power for us last summer when we were out of contentment. But there are a few changes we want to make in light of the things that we learned last summer uh, so that he's ready to go uh, for a good few years until the house is built out of contentment. So, I have no idea what he's designed. He's been working on this top secret status, I guess. <laughs> now it's time to finalize the design for the panel rack system on, on Buzz's side because when we go back this summer, it's for good. And we need to make sure that uh, Buzz is set up for, you know, long-term, temporary, but long-term use.